protest assassination, 1968, turning point of a nation. The 1960s were a turning point for a generation coming of age and a nation at war. At the forefront were political and social marches, protests, and the youth counterculture. Prior to this time, the Democratic Party dominated the nation from 1932 to 1964. In 1968, voters looking for national stability turned toward the Republican Party for new leadership. Youthful rebellions demanded free speech, civil rights, and equality, which conflicted with the values of their parents. The 60s was characterized, culminating in many ways in 1968, was a more open willingness in popular culture to challenge conformity. Some people called it hypocrisy because they could see that there was a gap between what they were being told that their government was doing and what was being reported by word of mouth or by photos in Life magazine. You sons and your daughters are beyond your command. Your old road is rapidly aging. Please get out of the new one if you can't lend your hand for the times they are changing. 68 is a good year to pick for sensibilities being changed by people going, we don't have to do this. We live in America. We live in a free country. We the horror of the assassination of President Kennedy on November 22, 1963 shocked the nation. Vice President Lyndon B. Johnson was immediately sworn into office aboard Air Force One. During Johnson's presidency, domestic programs were started that addressed poverty, education, health care, housing problems, and urban reform. The Great Society rests on abundance and liberty for all. It demands an end to poverty and racial injustice, to which we are totally committed in our time. Most of the big Great Society programs were broad so-called entitlements and expansion of Social Security, Medicare, uh, uh, highway beautification, public radio and television. There were programs specifically for the poor or minorities, uh, Medicaid, uh, Voting Rights Act. Tuning into the three major broadcasting networks nightly brought into every American living room tragedy and horrific entertainment, deaths of heroes, uprisings, suppressions, the end of dreams, and blood in the streets of Chicago. Meanwhile, the Vietnam War was continually escalating. In January 1968, the Tet Offensive was a demonstration of how little control the Americans had in Vietnam. In the next few months, we must test the enemy's intentions in case this is indeed his last big gasp before negotiations. But it is increasingly clear to this report that the only rational way out then will be to negotiate, not as victors, but as an honorable people. Tet was the final nail in the coffin for the administration of Lyndon Johnson. In 1963, when he came to power, his approval rating was over 80%. But by 1967, it was down to 40%. But then came Tet, and his ratings plummeted, as if Vietnam were a burning fuse that had suddenly ignited an explosion of dissent. Meanwhile, the civil rights protests continued. As we struggle to end legal segregation and all of the humiliation surrounding legal segregation, so it was a struggle for decency. It was a struggle to get rid of extremist behavior toward it's Negroes. Been a long, a long time coming, but I know a change gonna come. Martin Luther King dedicated his life to love and to justice between fellow human beings. The 1968 presidential election was a heart-wrenching struggle for the nation. 
Robert Kennedy's campaign was based on peace and social justice. Feel any differently after seeing him? I feel a little prouder of being an American. Did you get to see the senator? Yes, sir, I did. How did you feel about it? I was very pleased. I just left, got to lay my hand on him. The men are trained in government programs, and there's no jobs at the end of the training program because of the cutback, uh, because of the demands on our federal budget in Washington, the war in Vietnam. Following the deaths of both Kennedys and King, uh, it seemed as though it, the prevailing thought was, why bother? After Kennedy's death, Hubert Humphrey took the role as the Democratic nominee in the election. Delegates to the Democratic National Convention in Chicago, already deeply disturbed about the horrific national disunity, watched helplessly as chaos broke out in and outside of the convention. Those yippies that march in the amphitheater or go downtown or sit in restaurants or demand their rights, uh, they'll be risking their lives. I think there were 63 journalists who were beaten up or gassed. In, in a land that's known as freedom, how can such a thing be fair? Won't you please come to Chicago for the help that we can bring? We can change the world. The shock of losing three national heroes and the and the subsequent cynicism that came into play, I think much of America was looking for stability. The presidential election was won by the Republican nominee Richard Nixon. Nixon's campaign promised to return law and order, which appealed to the older conservative generation. You began seeing, first in 1966 in congressional elections, and then in 1968 in the presidential election, um, a shifting away by traditional Democratic voters, especially in cities, and in some cases in the South, white Democrats shifting towards the Republican Party. And that be, it sort of emerged in 1966, and I think was an important part of Nixon's electoral victory in 1968. And he won the vote. Uh, people voted more for him, and the people that didn't like him didn't stand up and vote. And when I've got something to say, sir, I'm gonna say it now. I've read of other countries where the students take a stand. We didn't want to believe we'd thrown our lives away on, on lost causes, so what would we do next? And the, some people wanted to go work in the uh, consumer campaigns of Ralph Nader. Some, some people wanted to organize women, uh, clerical work. Many of them went into the Peace Corps. A new Republican bloc, largely based in the South, formed to win seven out of the next ten elections. And helped nurture people like Ronald Reagan, who saw government, as he said, as not the solution, but the problem. Southern Republicans and Southwestern Republicans also were a much more conservative, sort of anti-government group of Republicans. The decade of protests culminating in 1968 was a turning point for American politics. It began a debate which continues to this day about civil rights, taxes, and great society entitlement programs. Ah! You say you want a revolution. 